Come on, punk, come on! Let's see what you got. Nice kick. Not bad. Better? Good, but not good at... Ah! Ah! Mike Barnes, Karate's bad boy, is Daniel's nemesis in Karate Kid Part 3, and henchman to Terry Silver and John Kreese. But who is Mike Barnes? Is he just a ruthless bully to Daniel? Or is there more to him than meets the eye? And how might he return in future seasons of Cobra Kai? I'm Ken Cole. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and like, and be sure to let me know what you think about Mike Barnes in the comments. Mike Barnes' story takes place in Karate Kid 3. After John Kreese and Terry Silver decide to take revenge on Daniel and Miyagi and open a new chain of Cobra Kai dojos, Terry discovers Mike Barnes, known as Karate's Bad Boy, and featured in a martial arts magazine. Terry then invites Mike to live in his mansion while he trains Mike and promises 50% of Cobra Kai's new dojos to Mike if he beats Daniel in the tournament. When Daniel decides not to enter the tournament, Mike bullies Daniel into signing the application and he pulls out all the stops. He beats Daniel up, kicks his friend Jessica, tries to attack Mr. Miyagi, steals Miyagi's entire stock of bonsai trees, loses to Terry Silver in a staged fight, then traps Daniel and Jessica in Devil's Cauldron, a geological pit where the rising tide drowns anyone at the bottom. After he forces Daniel to sign, Mike breaks Mr. Miyagi's prized bonsai tree. Later, after Terry reveals his true self to Daniel and Chris pops back to life, Mike pummels Daniel again until Miyagi throws Mike through the door and then in Miyagi's possibly most badass move, uses Mike Barnes to turn off the lights so he can fight Kreese and Terry in the dark. At the tournament, Mike Barnes executes Terry's plan to perfection, Perfect. dominating Daniel and using illegal moves to keep the score even. Then when Daniel does the kata, Mike is startled and ends up losing in sudden death. Mike Barnes is played by actor Sean Kanan in a great performance, full of menace and physical skill. And as he's presented in Karate Kid Part 3, the character is pretty straightforward. He's Daniel's teen antagonist and henchman for the main villain, filling a similar role to Johnny in Part 1 and Chosen in Part 2. He's intimidating and brutal, I own you! I own you, Larusso! motivated by money, and possibly the greatest physical threat Daniel has faced in part because he doesn't seem to have any remorse or moral code. Even after parts one and two, Daniel doesn't have the martial arts skill to defend himself from Mike Barnes during the entire movie until the very last moment in the tournament. In fact, Mike Barnes, under the instruction of Terry Silver and John Kreese, makes Daniel afraid to his core. Yo, I'm afraid! Aye, aye. I'm afraid of him, all right? Aye, aye, aye. Aye. On the surface, that's all there is to Mike. A mean guy who terrorizes Daniel for a payout. But is there more going on with Mike Barnes than the movie is telling us at first glance? Let's dive deeper. When we first see Mike, he's made a name and reputation for himself as a skilled and perhaps brutal fighter. Even from his first meeting with Terry Silver, we can tell a few things about Mike. First, he and his family probably don't have a lot of money, and he's not from the LA area. Welcome to LA. Oh, hey, listen, thank you for bringing me down, Mr. Silver. And seems pretty wowed by the opulence of Terry's mansion. This place is intense. For whatever reason, Mike's parents or guardians are okay with him traveling to LA and moving in with this strange Terry Silver guy for weeks or months when he should be in school, assuming he hasn't dropped out. Which means they probably don't care much about Mike at home, or they want him to bring home a lot of money, or both. In fact, there are some parallels between Mike Barnes and Daniel that the movie really doesn't explore. They both have lower income backgrounds, they're both stubborn, why are you being so stubborn? They've likely both had some emotional pain growing up. When my father died, I spent a lot of time thinking I wasn't such a great son. And they've both found a purpose through studying karate. Though Daniel has a strong mentor in Miyagi, Mike Barnes might not have had a mentor before meeting Terry Silver. In this first meeting, notice the initial deal that Terry offered Mike over the phone. You remember on the phone you said that if I come down here and I beat this uh, LaRusso kid in the All-Valley Tournament? that you give me 25% ownership in your new dojos. It looks like this was the bait Terry used to lure Mike to the mansion. But as we'll see, Terry turns this into a bait and switch. Notice what else Terry includes in the deal. You get a weekly draw on a car. Any questions? Okay, so a weekly draw is draw pay or an advance. This means that Terry's giving him money every week, but that money isn't coming out of the goodness of Terry's heart. That money is coming out of Mike's future award for winning the tournament. 
And as we know, Mike doesn't win the tournament. This could be important for the events after Karate Kid 3, because depending on how Terry wrote the contract, and I get that in writing, by noon today, Mike might have had to give back all the payouts for the weeks he was living with Terry before the tournament. And if Mike didn't have the money anymore, and he or his family couldn't pay it back, that could be an issue for someone like Terry Silver. Nothing's for free. Instead of taking 25%, Mike tries to strong arm Terry to get 50% ownership of the Cobra Kai dojos. After a very mild pushback from Terry and a walkout threat by Mike, Terry agrees to give him 50%. Mr. Silver, you just bought yourself a champion. You remember that? Notice Terry's subtle threat to Mike there. We're starting to see that Terry's playing games with Mike. From everything we know about Terry Silver in my previous videos, Terry is a ruthless multimillionaire businessman that craves power and control in every situation. He loves to deceive and manipulate and operates outside the law. That's why it's almost cute when Mike tries to muscle Terry for more money. Check out Mike's rehearsed demand. But uh, I've been giving this some thought. For me to do my absolute best, which is what I want to do for you, I'm afraid I'm gonna need 50%. Terry knows what's coming from a mile away. He almost laughs at Mike for suggesting it, almost like he's making fun of Mike. Ooh, 50%. Well, I don't know if I can afford more than 35. The fact that Terry rolls over so quickly, though, you got your 50%. should make Mike suspicious about this whole thing. But he's young, he probably doesn't have much background in business or money, and he has absolutely no clue what Terry has in store for him which remember what Terry's initial deal was. You remember on the phone you said that if I come down here and I beat this uh, LaRusso kid in the All Valley Tournament, that you give me 25% ownership in your new dojos. Mike just had to beat Daniel in the tournament. He had to be a champion, and that would launch the chain of Cobra Kai dojos. Together, we are about to open a chain of Cobra Kai dojos. But unfortunately for Mike Barnes, Terry makes him do much more than just beat Daniel in a tournament. Terry brings in Snake and Dennis, a couple of seedy henchmen. These guys are about Mike's age and know how to fight. Well, somewhat. Ah! And are familiar with the darker side of Terry's ventures. You're looking to be a bad boy in LA. Snake's the boy to be bad with, right Snake? You know it. But notice that starting now, these guys are always with Mike. The only times they're not is when Terry himself is nearby, which means Mike is constantly being watched by Terry or the guys who are reporting to Terry. They're not friends like Johnny's Cobra Kai buddies in part one. Mike is under constant surveillance from his boss, which really limits his ability to make free choices. I need your title. So then enter the tournament and go for it. Maybe you didn't hear me. I need your title. You don't enter and that affects my financial future, Daniel. And I'm not gonna let that happen, get it? I think it would have been interesting to see a little more of Mike's interaction with Terry during the middle part of the movie, because there seems to be a lot going on behind the scenes that would give us some insight into who Mike Barnes is and what he must be going through. After Terry Silver hides in Miyagi's fireplace and overhears Daniel's decision not to enter the tournament, it appears that Terry changes his deal with Mike Barnes. Mike not only has to beat Daniel in the tournament, he has to begin pressuring Daniel to enter the tournament. At first, it's just verbal threats along with Snake. Come on, man, right now! Right, come on, right now! But when that doesn't work, Mike is forced to escalate his tactics. So what's going on between Mike Barnes and Terry that we're not seeing? Terry says he's working full-time on revenge. For the next few weeks, my business is strictly revenge. Everything is in place, sir. So that presumably would include grooming Mike to be a pain-inflicting enemy for Daniel. And we see how manipulative Terry is with Daniel basically turning him from a non-violent person into a strike-first, strike-hard Cobra Kai fighter. And while I think Mike comes from a rougher background than Daniel, and would have less of a problem with violence, we have to remember that Terry Silver is likely manipulating and transforming Mike Barnes behind the scenes, turning him into the brutal villain we see in the movie. It's an interesting question. What version of the Quicksilver method is Mike Barnes forced to suffer through? When Daniel refuses to sign the application again, notice Mike says, Hey, Dennis! You didn't sign it yet. Waiting for Dennis's cue on what to do. Then Dennis destroys Miyagi's property, so Mike escalates the physical threats. He actually does the pretty evil move of kicking Jessica in the stomach. Ah! Hey! But that wasn't an automatic decision for Mike. <sighs> it takes him a second to go to that next level of attacking Jessica. Almost like he's remembering a recent lesson from someone we know. Aside! 
about how to draw out his enemies and make them experience pain. Also notice that Snake tells Mike to save it for the tournament as Miyagi comes in. Save it for the tournament! Which shows that Snake and Dennis are the ones really in charge. So already we see that Mike, who just signed on to beat some kid in a tournament, is finding himself stuck as Terry's pawn and forced to terrorize Daniel to make him enter the tournament. I mean, he's committing some felonies here, including breaking into Miyagi's property and stealing the entire stock of bonsai trees. Though I'm sure Terry's persuaded Mike that he has nothing to worry about and that the cops are in his pocket. Bribe him as usual. When Daniel and Jessica are trapped at Devil's Cauldron, notice that Mike convinces Daniel to sign the application and then Mike threatens Daniel. Don't even think about backing out, man, because then I'll really be pissed. And he's done with it. He finally accomplished this insane, violent mission to get Daniel to sign the application. But it's Snake who pushes it further and takes Miyagi's bonsai tree. Oh, yeah, the stakes just went up. Give me the tree. Daniel, don't. No. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> so taking this cue from his employer, Mike takes the tree and makes a brutal move that's heartbreaking to Daniel. Make a wish. No. Another tactic he may have learned from Terry. So notice how Mike Barnes is going above and beyond for Terry Silver. How well he's executing each of Terry's wishes. And even if he wanted to, it's probably next to impossible for Mike to back out of this deal with Terry Silver. Next, Mike busts into Miyagi's backyard to beat up Daniel for calling the cops. But this time, Terry Silver arrives as Daniel's savior to defeat Mike Barnes. I've called this a fake fight before, but maybe it's better to call it a staged fight because it looks like Mike could be enduring a full contact assault from Terry. This deal just keeps getting worse for Mike. Get your hand off me. The next time we see Mike, it's the scene where Terry reveals his true nature. Mike just walks out from the back, where he's apparently been waiting the whole time. I mean, Mike and Terry were dressed in their geese, so they must have been training there. Which makes you wonder, how often was Mike back there during Daniel's training? It's crazy to think that Terry may have had Mike secretly listen to Daniel doing the Quicksilver training, but then Terry's a little crazy himself. <laughs> In the reveal scene, Kreese pops out. <laughs> and let's pause to consider this from Mike's perspective. At some point while living with Terry Silver, Mike realized that this was an elaborate scheme, not just to beat Daniel in a tournament, but to terrorize him and Miyagi. Mike realized that Terry was a karate master, had a best friend who was another karate master who was pretending to be dead, and they brought Mike all the way to LA to get revenge on a kid and an old man, even though they could have done it themselves. You have to wonder when Mike realized this whole thing was nuts. Mike keeps going along with it like a professional. Though Terry keeps ordering Mike around like he's totally dispensable. What are you waiting for? Forcing him to attack Miyagi, even though Mike's no match for him. My favorite Mike Barnes moment is actually when Terry's having a huge outburst at Miyagi. You think this is the end of it all, man? And we see Mike sitting against the wall, and he's just got this look on his face of, what the hell did I get myself into? These people are all nuts. I mean, did you ever have a job where you did great work, and they just asked more and more from you? Where they were really starting to take advantage of you? But maybe you were too young and naive to know any better? And maybe you couldn't afford to leave the job, so you had to roll with it? That's Mike Barnes. He's done everything right to the letter. Everything. He's been working for and living with an insane multimillionaire that treats him really badly. But still, he risks his physical safety and criminal record to terrorize Daniel. He's just keeping his eye on the prize, his big payday. This could be the ticket away from a bad home situation or to a stable career in his passion, karate. At the tournament, Mike really holds up his end of the bargain. He's beaten everyone else to get to the finals. Then he agrees to play by Terry's insane rules of losing repeated points with illegal moves. First you win a point, then you lose a point. Keep the score 0-0. Zero, zero. Pulverize him for the full three minutes. I mean, this could get him banned from competing in future karate tournaments. Oh, wait. We, the All Valley Committee of 1985, issue a lifetime ban on Cobra Kai for the unethical and unsportsmanlike conduct shown by senseis Terry Silver, John Kreese, and their student Mike Barnes. So he's being a good soldier for Terry. But it'll all work out, right? He just has to beat Daniel. Easy. He's been doing that the whole movie. Until Daniel pulls out some kata. I admit, I do appreciate the what-the-hell look from Mike Barnes here. He just endured all this insanity. 
He just needs one more point to close the deal. And now there's this. And then he loses. And he's pissed. Because all the crap he had to do, all the freakiness he probably witnessed living with Terry Silver, has resulted in no Cobra Kai dojos, no equity stake, and possibly he's on the hook for the money Terry paid him in advance. And he knows that Terry probably will turn into a volcano. I mean, I wouldn't want to be in the car ride home with him. So what does this mean for a possible future Cobra Kai appearance from Mike Barnes? Well, Mike was pretty young at the time of Karate Kid 3, and I think it's fair to say that, like Daniel, Mike endured some trauma from Terry Silver. I think Mike's life could have gone in many directions after that. He could have gotten meaner, or he could have found a good mentor and changed his ways. He was extremely skilled in karate, so he may have continued to master the martial arts over many years, to the point where his skills could rival or surpass those of some other karate masters we know. The one thing I think is certain is that there was a lot of unfinished business for Mike after that tournament. I'm sure he felt like he earned his promised 50% stake in the Cobra Kai dojos, and that he would have easily won had Terry not made him do all this psycho win a point, lose a point crap, or even the extra stuff with bullying Daniel to sign the application. And I'm sure Mike had to endure some extra wrath from Terry after the tournament, and maybe even some retribution. Or maybe Mike and Terry reconciled at some point. But this was probably an experience for Mike where he'd look back on it over the years and get angrier and angrier that he let himself get taken advantage of. It might be interesting for Mike that the Cobra Kai dojos are back in the valley. If Terry's coming back to the series, is it possible that he and Kreese would recruit Mike Barnes to take down Daniel again? It's possible. But after everything we've just seen about Mike Barnes, it doesn't look like Terry and Mike would have parted on good terms. I wonder if Mike would have caught wind of Cobra Kai's resurgence and decided to see for himself what was happening in the Valley. Maybe he's at the point in his life and his karate career where he can claim that equity stake that he was denied all those years ago. He might be an adversary for Daniel and Johnny, or maybe he'll apologize like Chosen did. Maybe he'll want to clear his name at the All Valley Tournament, which had reprimanded him all those years ago. And if Terry Silver is teaming up with John Kreese, maybe neither of them realize who Mike Barnes has become and how much of a threat he could be to their plans. We'll just need to wait and see what the future might hold. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know what you think about Mike Barnes in the comments. Are you looking forward to maybe seeing him again on Cobra Kai? Catch you next time.